you know, any any of the two strikers, um, hopefully I'll get a chance to play behind, you know, one or if not both of them. Um, so Malcolm and, and Brian. Um, and then also, you know, Kevin and the guy that signed from Valor, because I think, you know, we, we're pretty similar in terms of, you know, the way we play. So hopefully we can, you know, complement each other uh, quite well on the pitch. <laughs> Footy 258 here, back again. I'm your host, Jordan Antonio Brown, and today we've got with me another episode of Pro Ballers exclusive interviews. And I got none other than Oli Bassett with me, Ottawa's new signing. How you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thank you for having me. No worries. So, um, talk to me. You went to the capital now, and how did that come about? And yeah, um, did you have any clue that you were going there? Um, yeah, I think last last season obviously played with uh, Pacific. It was my first season in the um, CPL, um, and it wasn't until basically two weeks after the after the final against Forge, um, everything was pretty much signed and and sorted out um, before I went back to the to the UK for Christmas. So it's actually yeah pretty pretty easy and, and smooth um, process. That's good then. Uh, you didn't have to wait too long, and that's always the best feeling when. You know where your next move is is going to be. Uh, how comes, you know, after having such a good season, winning the league and everything, um, how comes, you know, that came about? Um, I think, like, after the, toward, well, the start of the season, I was playing, you know, I started pretty well. I was playing, you know, the majority of the games. And then I just found, like, towards the back end of the season, um, I wasn't playing um, as much as I would have liked. I don't think I actually played like the last four or five games um, and, you know, Pacific kind of had an option um, in my contract to extend it for another year, but spoke to the, the manager par and stuff and his, and his coaching staff like after the last game and, you know, they, they kept the door open for me to come back if, if, if I wanted to. Um, I just thought there'd be you know, a better opportunity um, to hopefully get more regular games like elsewhere. Um, and I think by the time the season starts, I'll be 24. So, next two years is, is going to be pretty big in terms of like trying to play, you know, a more like consistent role uh, week in, week out. Yeah. Um, you know, you have dilemmas in your career on what you should do and they're very important and pivotal when you're supposed to make them because at the end of the day, you can never go back in time and you only have sometimes one chance, you know, to make it right. How comes you would say that um, in that situation you would choose to be in a team where maybe you're going to be, you know, one of the guys who are stand out and playing all the time rather than, you know, you know, trying to get into the starting 11. Um, did you see yourself maybe um, having a pathway at Pacific for that? Um, I think the biggest thing for at Pacific was like, if you're, you know, if you're training and playing well, then, you know, you're going to play. Um, but I think like towards the end of the season, um, and then it was sort of like after the Whitecaps game that we played in the cup, um, I think the team was pretty much like, you know, the guys were, you know, performing week in, week out. So there wasn't really like any excuse to, to change anyone. Um, obviously, they had good midfielders as well, which is obviously a competitive, um, you know, position um, that they had at the club. But yeah, I think, you know, I could have probably stayed and tried to like, um, you know, really push myself and, and you try and lock down a, a starting place. But I think Ottawa offered me a, you know, a longer contract as well. So there's kind of like more security there um, long term. You know, if I do well in the two years, then obviously they've got an option um, for 24 as well. So, yeah, I'm just, I decided to go there and hopefully it, it pays off. Yeah, they, they, in the recent days, they're signing quite a lot of players and, they're probably one of the most active CPL teams in the, in the market right now, and they're getting their business done early. Um, who are you looking forward to playing with there? And, um, yeah, uh, are you excited to live in a different city in Canada? And it's also the capital. Yeah, yeah. I think I um, lived in, obviously, Victoria last season. Um, it's a little bit different to what I've been used to over the last few years. Obviously, it's a little bit quieter and stuff like that, but you know, still, it was still a nice place to live. Um, 
So I think in terms of like the um, lifestyle aspect, I think Ottawa would be would be pretty good. Um, you know, living in the capital and you know getting to experience that. But in terms of playing, um, I think they only re-signed six or seven from the squad last year. Um, so I think you know any any of the two strikers. Um, hopefully, I'll get a chance to play behind you know one or if not both of them. Um, so Malcolm and and Brian. Um, and then also, you know, Kevin and the guy that signed from Valor, because I think, you know, we, we're pretty similar in terms of, you know, the way we play. So hopefully we can, you know, complement each other uh, quite well on the pitch. Um, going back to Pacific, you guys won the league. What kind of feeling was that? Although you didn't play, what kind of feeling was it like winning the league and, you know, getting something on your resume? at a young age in your career? Yeah, I think what you said there um, is definitely like one of the biggest things, you know, having a title or any championship like on your football CV or whatever you want to call it. I think that's like one of the biggest, one of the biggest things, whether, whether you play in the final or not, you know, you still go down as um, part of the squad that won the league. Um, I think like the, the going into the game, um, I think, everyone was kind of like maybe writing us off before the game and everyone was talking about, you know, Forge going three in a row um, and stuff like that. So I think to break that kind of like streak of winning the CPL um, was obviously really good for us. And yeah, the players that, that played in that game obviously did, did everything they could um, and left it all on the pitch. Yeah, what was the conversation like leading into that game? And did you guys believe? Although it's a cliche question, you know, you do believe, but uh, did you guys actually believe that you were going to win? Although that, like you said, they won two years prior to that. Yeah, I think everyone everyone believed that that we could we could beat them. Although you know, going into that game, that in the three years that the CPL had you know been going, Pacific had never beaten Forge. Um, so, so some of the boys were saying, you know, tonight will be the the only one that kind of matters and you know it was um, but I think they took confidence as well or we took confidence from the games against like the MLS teams obviously we beat the Whitecaps at home in the cup and then narrowly lost to Toronto so I think just playing against like that type of opposition and showing that you know we or the boys can compete with you know them types of players I think going into the final obviously they uh, they just tried to go out there and you know do what they've done for the the whole season and you know, luckily we nicked nicked a goal and held on to win one 0 So, yeah, we can't can't complain about that. Uh, describe the performance against Whitecaps, and you know, what were you guys thinking before that game? Um, I think obviously they're another team from from BC, so it was kind of like a Victoria BC kind of like it was the first you know kind of professional game I think that had been played between the two clubs. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just a case of having nothing to lose, um, just going out and just, you know, showing everyone, you know, the standard of the football in the CPL and, you know, how good, you know, we, we were as a team. And, yeah, I think it was full credit to, to everyone that played the part that night because I think that one will be, uh, will, will obviously go down in, in history for the first time that Pacific um, beat an MLS team in, in the Cup. Yeah, um, last question on Pacific. Um, pa, he's left the club now and he's gone to MLS Next Pro. Um, what was he like? How was he around the team? What do you think he's different in compared to other managers that you've had in the past? Um, I think as a coach, like, he's a, he's a very good... Um, first, he's like uh, obviously a top coach. Uh, his man management is very good um, in terms of like you know on the pitch and then you know, understanding players like off the pitch. Um, so I think that is one of his biggest, biggest strengths for sure um, in terms of like getting to know the player, maybe as a person um, before a footballer. Um, and then obviously he just wants the, wants the best and, um, you know, wants the training to be as, as high intensity as possible um, week in, week out, uh, day in, day out. So yeah, he was actually um, joy to work under. And I don't think if it wasn't for him, then, Obviously, I don't think I'd have the, the chance to, to come and play in the CPL. So, yeah, I'll always be grateful to Pa for, for bringing me to Canada. For more content like this, like, share and subscribe. Mm -hmm.